Our first story is for the farmers and beer connoisseurs in our audience. The two are partnering more than ever to create the perfect craft brew, all made here in Tennessee. Laura Faber taps into the details of this story from a brewer and hops farmer in Columbia. The craft beer is flowing in Columbia at Bad Idea Brewery. All over the state, craft beer breweries have exploded. Since 2010, the number has more than doubled. Three out of four Tennessee beer drinkers say they prefer craft beer and are willing to pay more for a local flavor. I kind of had my great beer awakening uh, after college. We went to grad school in Memphis and uh, you know, I was used to Bud Light, Natty Light, stuff like that, college beer, gas station beer, and uh, had my first true craft beer at the Flying Saucer, and it was uh, Dogfish Head's uh, Midas Touch. You know, it has saffron and muscat grape in it. And I thought, my God, you can put all this stuff into beer and it tastes cool? And uh, from then I was hooked. Zach Fox, owner of Bad Idea Brewery in Columbia, Tennessee, is also the town librarian, a master's of science information professional. After his first taste of craft beer, Zach says he checked out every book in the library and started studying how to brew beer. It took 10 years of research, home brewing, and exhibiting his beer before Zach made Bad Idea the best idea he ever had, besides marrying his wife, Cassie. I've got an awesome uh, partner, uh, and we were sitting around couples, you know, eating dinner, and uh, we kind of flushed out a business plan, and my wife looked at it, and she said, this is a really bad idea. There are a little, few more expletives in there, but, you know, probably not public television friendly. The experimentation is the thing with craft beer, actually getting a taste of local culture and community. Bad Idea doesn't have a flagship beer. They've created 200 unique flavors so far. It usually hits me when I'm like uh, standing in front of the refrigerator at 3 a.m. grabbing a snack or something, um, or when I'm in the you know, junk food aisle at the grocery store. The other good idea that was always important to Zach was to source ingredients locally as much as possible. His hops come from Eric Landis of Columbia's Tipsy Mule Hops Farm. Originally from Oregon, Eric knows that latitude is key to growing great hops. And at 35.6, Columbia is just in the right range. I bought six plants just thinking maybe let's see what happens. The six grew, the next year I had 100. Year after that, I think I had 250, and now I'm up to 500. I have four varieties of hops. I have uh, nuggets for bittering hops, and then the other three varieties I have, uh, Cascades, uh, Cashmere's, and Chinooks, are technically, they are uh, aroma hops. That in the last 10 years, the hop, acreage of hop production in the United States has doubled and now it's at 60-some thousand acres of hops in the United States. So that doubling, and then if you look at the varieties that are being grown, it, it has changed over those 10 years and it's become more aroma hops. There's bittering hops and aroma hops, and it's become a lot more on the aroma side. So I think it's, it's reflective of the consumers, maybe new consumers, you know, new age groups, uh, coming in and tasting beers and being a little more experimental with what they what they want. Craft beer brewers are chemists, and both Eric and Zach love the scientific collaboration. So does the Tennessee Craft Brewers Guild. Executive Director Sharon Cheek says this natural partnership is actually an official state initiative called Farm to Tap. Beer from the very beginning was all about using local ingredients going back thousands of years. And so I think, um, you know, we've seen that trend lately in the last several years, especially since the pandemic. People want to shop local. They want to know where their money's going. And in our case, we want to keep money right here in Tennessee. So if a Tennessee brewer can buy 
ingredients from a Tennessee farmer and all of that money stays right here in our communities, it's better for our state and it's better for our industries. Beer is a personal thing and the creativity with craft beer flavors is what drives the cult following. Okay, Eric, so this is what you deliver to brewers? This is correct. Okay. This is what I deliver to brewers, either in a dried state like it is now or uh, straight from the plant. Okay, right. now what is, there is a money part. There is a money part to this and we can open this one and it's the lupulin which is inside each hop and is the yellow you see a yellowish uh, powder in there basically and why is that so and important? that that is where all of the oils and the acids are in the plant so that's what the brewer is going to extract when they make their beer they're extracting that out of the hop on this day, what is boiling in the fermentation tank is a special Tennessee Crossroads brew made with products that the show has featured over the years. We're going to be throwing in moo pies, goo goo clusters, Willis shortbread, uh, kernels popcorn, and uh, then we're going to be making a, a stout with that. We're going to be boiling that down, adding in hops from Tipsy Mule Hop Farm, and then the resultant product, we're going to be pitching bootleg biology yeast that was a uh, propagated here in Tennessee as well. Temperature is important. A change of one or two degrees can impact the mash. This water is going in at 170 degrees and we're shooting for a target mash temperature in here for like 154 since we're making a stout today. So right now it's grain, there's goo goo clusters and there's shortbread in there right now. So you're gonna just, whole thing, you're just gonna aim for the, aim for the hole there. It's this organic mashing together of two passions that gives everyone something to drink to. It's that connection. I'm not, I'm not taking my hops, I'm not processing them into pellets and sending them off to a brewery I've never been to. You know, you're lifting up someone else in your community that's got a business that's, you know, helping your product and you're, you know, kind of giving them a platform too to say, hey, you know, I, I contributed to that and you know, we, we did something awesome together.